the pointless point of session or of our Zen practice to expand upon it or of our Buddhist training is not to look like a Zen student on the cushion is not to perfect the form but is to open the heart to live in loving kindness not sentimentality deep wisdom and compassion it's very hard to open the heart strangely enough all of you know the ways in which you feel there are some kinds of impediments or restrictions or as you said yesterday, limitations. And so life has a way of challenging us or throwing us for a loop to help us, to encourage us. Unexpected circumstances befall us. And we may call them accidents, but as you know, there's a famous saying in Buddhism, nothing happens by accident. We may say in joining with the mind of Son Roshi, whose march on we are doing, sitting after sitting, march on bravely, that we are all heroes of our own karma. Are you feeling heroic today? You are. Heroes of your own karma. All beings are owners of their own karma. And we are here to transform. The purification of our practice is transformational one of the most wonderful things that happens to us in this way of challenging and transforming which we don't consider wonderful when it happens is loss and the feeling of failure. So often we do things in order to, we have a hidden motivation, in order to make something happen that we want. We may seem as though we are doing compassionate acts, but there's a hidden agenda. So what happens? A lightning strike of loss makes us realize this. I feel I've been very deeply steeping myself in failure since becoming abbot here. There's really nothing I can do to 
quote unquote, solve the difficult situation that I inherited on January 1st, 19, what is it, 20, 20, 2011. I've tried everything. It doesn't work. I'm not talking about being here with you, sitting in session and talking together this way, but rather the difficult framework of taking the reins of an organization under a dark cloud and hostility and anguish. So now it's 2013 and I have to say I've failed. At what I hoped to achieve, which was some kind of rapprochement, healing of Sangha, bringing together in a harmonious way the wishes of all on all sides. But I've come to see it can't be done. I can't do it. What can we do about that? And this is what I mean by loss and failure being our great teachers. What can we do about that? March on. Bravely march on. Sitting after sitting. Opening our hearts. Realizing that whatever we thought it should be, is just that, what we thought it should be. The Dharma has other ideas. We don't see the full picture. So, some kind of deep acceptance is necessary. I have thought many times of running away. But then I think about you and all of you and this beautiful place. And somehow I know that the clouds will part. Maybe not in my lifetime, but all I can do is do my best. It's not always possible to achieve harmony, integration. But what we can do is be in accord with circumstances as they are. And as we know, from one moment to the next, they change. We must change. We must be always ready. Always ready for the next what? You might say the next blow. The next gift. One and the same.
when Len Mullen was teaching last weekend at ONG, one of the things he said was the most important thing <clears throat> for our practice as Buddhists, as Bodhisattvas, is equanimity. To cultivate equanimity means that no matter what is happening, you don't like it, okay. You love it? Okay. Equanimity is a deep and radical acceptance of things as they are and are already different. There is a wonderful twin haiku, one year apart uh, section in Endless Vow. that I wanted to read about. This feeling of loss, failure, and radical acceptance and equanimity. The first one was written in the spring of 1943, and it's titled, During the War in the Pacific. Here's the haiku. News of a victorious battle I just shuffle along in the mud at this spring temple. One year later, spring 1944. News of a disastrous battle. I just shuffle along in the mud at this spring temple. That's it. That's what I'm doing. That's what we're doing here. 